before we dive in, a quick note. The Fleischner Society guidelines apply to incidentally found lung nodules in adults over the age of 35. They don't apply to patients 35 and under, to those with known cancer, or to the immunocompromised. Management is individualized in these contexts. And the guidelines also don't apply in lung cancer screening. That's where lung RADS comes in. Three key papers shape how we actually use the Fleischner recommendations. The first, by McMahon and colleagues in Radiology 2017, is the official guideline. The second, by Banker and colleagues, defines standardized CT methods for reliable nodule measurement. And the third, by Bueno, Landeris, and Chung, unpacks many complexities and judgment calls in applying the 2017 Fleischner guidelines. On the third page of the first paper is the table we all know, or we all know how to Google, the summary chart. At its core lies an implicit 1% cancer risk threshold. Below 1%, no follow-up is prescribed, but once risk crosses 1%, Surveillance or workup is triggered. At first glance, the table looks deceptively simple. Just a black and white lookup tool. Choose the nodule type, the size, the patient's risk profile, and there's your answer. But in practice, many of the recommendations are not binary. The language shifts. Words like optional and consider appear throughout and some criteria just aren't precisely defined. These qualifiers demand nuance, judgment, and a grounding in the evidence if you want to apply the Fleischner guidelines soundly and consistently. Today I'll focus on five gray zones where this softer language frequently comes into play. Single solid nodules under 6 millimeters in high-risk patients where 12-month follow-up CT is defined as, or described as, optional. Single solid nodules 6 to 8 millimeters in low-risk patients, where CT at 6 to 12 months is followed by advice to, quote, consider another CT at 18 to 24 months from baseline. Multiple solid nodules 6 millimeters or larger in low-risk patients, where CT at three to six months is followed by advice to, quote, consider another CT at 18 to 24 months from baseline. Single ground glass nodules under six millimeters, where the default is no follow-up except in certain suspicious cases where we are advised to consider two and four-year imaging. And multiple subsolid nodules six millimeters or larger where after stability is established at three to six months, management is supposed to hinge on the most suspicious nodule, but the guidelines are silent if no nodule is clearly dominant. We'll start with single solid nodules under six millimeters in high-risk patients. The results from several lung cancer screening trials provide us with helpful context for how to handle these guys. The Nelson trial showed us that lung nodules under 5 millimeters had essentially no predictive value for cancer, even in high-risk cohorts. The NLST showed us that 4 to 6 millimeter nodules in high-risk patients had very low lung cancer prevalence, well under 1%, at baseline and during subsequent follow-up lung cancer screening rounds. But The PANCAN trial reminds us that morphology and location matter. Tiny nodules under 6 millimeters can carry a 1-5% to cancer risk if they're in an upper lobe or have speculated or irregular margins. So, according to the Fleischner guidelines and related companion papers, the consensus is that tiny solid nodules in adults without known cancer are overwhelmingly benign and routine follow-up CT at 12 months is not recommended unless the margins are speculated or irregular or the nodule is in an upper lobe. 
Now, we'll move on to single solid nozzles 6 to 8 millimeters in low risk patients. Nelson showed us that 5 to 10 millimeter nozzles fall into an intermediate suspicion zone. In this size range, volume doubling time under 600 days does the heavy lifting for predicting cancer. For nozzles 6 to 8 millimeters in diameter, that corresponds to 1.6 to 2.1 millimeters of diameter growth within a 600 day or 20 month window, which corresponds to the CT at 18 to 24 months from baseline we're asked to quote consider, which follows an early check CT scan between 6 and 12 months after baseline that's meant to catch most malignant nozzles with fast volume doubling times. For folks who elect to do that first CT scan at the very upper end of the range at 12 months, you've covered a majority of the 600-day surveillance window, and if the nodule is unequivocally stable and benign appearing at 12 months, the consensus is that it's reasonable to stop there. So, according to the Fleischner guidelines and related companion papers, the consensus is that for a single solid 6 to 8 millimeter lung nodule in a low risk patient, if the first CT was done at 12 months and the nodule is unequivocally stable at that time, you're done. But if the first CT was done before 12 months or stability is equivocal at 12 months, you should do the 18 to 24 month from baseline CT scan. Now let's tackle multiple solid nozzles six millimeters or larger in low risk patients. In the Nelson trial, cancer risk went up with two to four nozzles versus a single nozzle, but then dropped off with higher nozzle counts, probably due to granulomatous diseases entering the differential but you can't fully rule out metastatic lung nozzles as a differential diagnosis regardless of nodule count. With lung months, growth often declares fast with reported average volume doubling times of around five months. And that's why Fleischner recommends a three to six month triage CT for low risk patients with multiple nodules, six millimeters or larger. If the nozzles appear stable at this early check, the Fleischner guidelines say that a second follow-up CT at 18 to 24 months is optional and an individualized call. In a low-risk patient with multiple solid nozzles, 6 millimeters or larger, that are stable at 3 to 6 months, the consensus is that opting for the 18 to 24-month follow-up CT is reasonable when there are two to four nodules or when granulomatous infections are not locally endemic. Many experts also favor a second look at 18 to 24 months if the baseline and three to six month scans were not technically comparable. For example, if the scans were done with different kernels or slice thicknesses. If there's a near threshold size change that doesn't quite meet the Fleischner Society's growth threshold of two millimeters, or when patient preference leans towards extra reassurance. Okay, next up, single ground glass nodules under six millimeters. Tiny ground glass nodules are very common and many represent changes along the atypical adenomatous hyperplasia or early adenocarcinoma spectrum. They usually grow very slowly over many years. Because of that, doing follow-up scans of every single one would mean a lot of extra imaging and anxiety for patients, while only a very small number would ever turn out to be clinically significant. Which is why the default is no routine follow-up imaging. But there are two morphologic red flags that flip the switch to surveillance at two and four years. The first is fissure dislocation or retraction. That's when a tiny ground glass nodule seems to tug or bow a nearby fissure. The second is apparent speculation. But this isn't speculation in the classic solid nodule sense. What we're actually referring to 
are faint linear opacities, tiny vessels or septa in the surrounding lung being pulled in towards the ground glass nozzle, almost like matter sliding into a little black hole. The term spiculation in this context is technically a surrogate shorthand. Finally, let's talk about management with multiple subsolid nodules, six millimeters or larger. The Fleischner guidelines recommend a follow-up CT at three to six months for patients with multiple ground glass and or part solid nodules, six millimeters or larger. If the nodules remain stable, further management should then be based on the most suspicious one. For example, in a case with several ground glass nodules of varying size and one part solid nodule, all stable at three to six months, management would then be driven by the part solid nodule. If there are only ground glass nodules of different sizes, management would likely focus on the largest. Where the guidelines get a little fuzzy is with multiple subsolid nodules of similar size that are all stable at three to six months, but none stands out as dominant. In that situation, what's the best next step? In patients with multiple subsolid nodules, six millimeters or larger, multifocal infection is a leading consideration that often proves transient on the three to six month follow-up CT. If the nodules persist, at three to six months, however, concern shifts towards multiple primary adenocarcinomas. Although one could argue that either of these two management options may seem reasonable, even when all of the nodules are pure ground glass, the consensus is that subsequent management should follow the pathway for a single part solid nodule with the solid component under six millimeters, not the solitary pure ground glass nodule schedule. The rationale is that in a multiple nodule context, the chance just one lesion may evolve warrants annual rather than biennial CT surveillance. So the Fleischner guidelines for all their strengths leave us with many gray zones. These are the spots where the language shifts to terms like optional or consider which can cloud the recommendations and lead different people to manage the very same situation in very different ways. To help with that, I've assembled this summary slide highlighting some of those gray areas we've just covered, along with a few practical prompts. But there is one more thing. Here's a table of the Fleischner guidelines. As you can see, the Fleischner recommendations split into single nodule versus multiple nodule pathways. Why do we manage these differently? Nelson showed us that lung cancer risk rises from one to four nodules, but also falls with more than four nodules, which suggests that multiplicity itself is informative and warrants a management pathway distinct from a single nodule condition. Because multiple lung nodules shifts the differential towards infection and metastases, processes that both often declare themselves on imaging within just a few months, Fleischner recommends a relatively early triage CT at three to six months for multiple nodules in every circumstance except for solid nodules under six millimeters. The rationale isn't a tiny bump in cancer probability. It's behavioral triage. Infection is common and often transient, while METs, when present, persist and typically show perceptible growth within around three months. Setting aside solid nodules over eight millimeters, the multiple nodule track schedules the first, the follow-up CT, at least as early and often earlier than the single nodule track. Except for the case of multiple solid nodules over eight millimeters, the follow-up cadence for multiple nodules after that first CT is just as strict or even stricter 
than what we do for a single nodule of the same size, density, and patient risk profile. Only with solid nodules 8 millimeters and over can the flesh and recommendations appear less strict for multiples. Because in patients without a known primary, incidentally found similarly sized multiple nodules often reflect benign infectious etiologists. A quick three to six months rescan efficiently separates transient infectious nodules from the less common but serious situations that would warrant PET CT or biopsy, reducing unnecessary procedures. It's important to remember that we exclusively use the multiple nodule pathway when all of the nodules look about equally suspicious. But if one lesion clearly stands out as the dominant nodule, management essentially splits. That dominant lesion is managed according to the single nodule pathway for its size and type, while the remaining similarly appearing nodules continue along the multiple nodule schedule. It's a bit like blackjack. When you get a pair, you don't always play them together. You split the hand and manage each one separately. Although Fleischner uses single versus multiple operationally, the term multiple is not spelled out anywhere. There's no sentence like, quote, multiple is two or more or five or more. So when do you go with the multiple pathway? Is it the presence of two nozzles? Is three enough or 10? If you're on the fence and there's no solid nozzle over eight millimeters, the consensus is that it makes sense to default to the multiple pathway. For a given size, density, and patient risk profile, the multiple tracks first follow-up and endpoint are never later and often earlier than the single nodule track. Remember, of course, that if one lesion is clearly dominant, meaning it's most suspicious, but not necessarily the largest, you'll need to manage that nodule on the single pathway while the rest continue on the multiple schedule. We all want a more consistent way to handle incidental lung nodules. And in practice, most of us reach for that one-page summary table from the 2017 Fleischner paper. It's a great tool, but there are definitely some gray areas in there that can lead to management calls that can vary unexpectedly. By applying the principles we've just gone over, we can smooth out those gray zones and keep our approach both evidence-based and consistent while still leaving room for nuance when it comes to individual patients.